How do you know that there isn't a person sitting behind the ChatGPT or the Bing AI interface quickly answering people's questions? I know that's that sounds ridiculous, right? But are the answers that these new AI platforms providing, are they realistic? Could they be coming from a human? That's what the Turing test was all about. A person is sitting behind a wall and talking to whoever is on the other side of the wall. This person is called the interrogator and the interrogator doesn't know who's on the other side, a machine or another human being. Now with ChatGPT and Bing AI and soon to be Google, whatever they release, Bard, obviously you're talking to a machine, but I'm going to ask it some questions and I'm going to ignore the fact that I'm talking to a computer and I'm going to give it points to see who's going to give us more realistic results. Hey, I'm Red Shirt Alex and GPT-4 was just released. So on top of these results, I'm also going to compare it to GPT-4 results. I went ahead and paid for ChatGPT Plus so I can get this feature and you can too. When you pay, you get this other option for selecting GPT-4 model. Here we go. First question. How come time flies like an arrow, but fruit flies like a banana? Flies like is mentioned twice in this and they have different meanings. Let's ask ChatGPT. And let's also ask Bing. ChatGPT says, this is a play on words on a humorous statement often attributed to a famous writer and comedian Groucho Marx. It's giving a very dictionary-like response. Not superhuman-like, but accurate. It, it got it. Now, Bing says, that's a clever and funny saying that plays with words and meanings. It can be interpreted in two different ways. Time passes quickly like a flying arrow. Fruit prefers a banana as food or habitat. Huh, that's not right at all. So yeah, at least ChatGPT sounds like a machine. It doesn't sound human at all, uh, but it, it, it differentiated the difference between time flies like an arrow and fruit flies like bananas. So it got it, but Bing did not. One for ChatGPT, zero for Bing. Red Shirt Alex here, GPT-4 got pretty much the same exact result as GPT-3.5, which was the previous version which you saw. So one point for GPT-4. Next question, is there a difference between fish purely that one of its legs are both the same? What the heck? <laughs> I'm gonna clear this because I want a brand new conversation so there's no context and I'm gonna ask each one of these the question. Now, this doesn't make sense to a human because it's supposed to not make sense. It's a BS phrase, nonsensical sentence. Bing says, I'm sorry, but I don't understand your question. That's right. <laughs> it's right. So then it goes into an explanation. A fish is an animal that lives only on water and gills of breathing. The statement is not grammatically correct. We can catch it, the fact that it's an AI, because it is detecting that it's grammatically faulty. And Bing is saying, this is not a grammatically correct statement. But it also says, sorry, but I don't understand your question, which is kind of human. So I'm going to give it a one point on that one. ChatGPT says, no, the difference between a fish and other animals, such as mammals and reptiles, is not simply the to fish both their legs. Okay, so ChatGPT totally missed the mark on this one. It's trying to answer the question. It's trying really hard, but the fact that this question doesn't make any sense is beyond ChatGPT. Zero for ChatGPT. Me again, GPT-4 seems like it's got a slightly better answer here. And I think I'm gonna have to give it a one. Seems like there might be some confusion in your question. This seems like a very human question. It says, feel free to clarify and I'll be happy to help. I'm gonna give it a one for this one. Number three, the following sentence is true. The previous sentence is false. Which of these sentences is true? And this is called a liar's paradox. Go for it, AIs. Instead of going out with the guys, I'll be going out with the AIs later on to play some pool. ChatGPT says, this is a classic paradoxical statement known as a liar's paradox. You got it. The two sentences contradict each other. Cool. Bing says, this is a paradoxical, <laughs> this is a paradoxical statement and cannot be resolved by logic. Neither of the sentences is true or false. They're both self-contradictory. So uh, yeah, I, I'll give a one to both of these because I like Bing's answer better. It's more human sounding, but they both got it. To compare it with ChatGPT4, the answer here is a lot more concise, which I like. It says it's a liar's paradox. Paradox, and it's a self-referential loop, making it impossible to determine. It's concise, it gives exact answer, like, I think this is very human. I already gave it a one, so I'm gonna give it a one again. Number four, I was originally going to get a brain transplant, but then I changed my mind. <laughs> That's a dad joke right there. I've been making lots of those lately. Okay, ChatGPT just gave itself away, but the point of this exercise is um, I know I'm talking to an AI, right? So I'm gonna ignore the fact that it says, as an AI language model, it gets that you're making a joke, but it's also outing itself. I'm an AI language model. A human wouldn't say that, right? Or maybe they would.
hmm, maybe if you wanted to raise billions of dollars, you can have a bunch of humans saying, I'm an AI language model. So it's giving a really long answer. It's understanding it's a joke, but it's kind of uh, wordy and unnecessarily so. Now, if it wasn't for Bing's answer, I would say ChatGPT. I would give it like a half a point for this one. But Bing's answer is right on. Check it out. Haha, <laughs> that's a clever joke. I like your sense of humor. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I don't usually get that when I make dad jokes. That is a human answer right there. And that would be really tough to tell. Unless, of course, I mean, it's a human that's humoring me, obviously. So it's a nice human. I'm going to give Bing a one for this one and zero for Chad GPT. Now, GPT-4 gets that this is a joke. It says, ah, I see what you did there. That's a clever play on words. So just like Bing, it's reacting in a very human way. Ha! Ah. But then it goes and explains things like wordplay and puns like this can be a fun way to lighten the mood or share a laugh. Human wouldn't say that. This is a tough one because it gave the answer. Not as good an answer as Bing. Bing was just spot on, very human-like. Uh, this one sort of half a human. I can't give half points, so I'm going to give this one a one. We definitely see an improvement here in GPT-4 versus the previous model. What do you get if you cross a joke with a rhetorical question? Now, as a listener, a human listener, you're supposed to listen to the whole question and say, um, well, you're not supposed to say anything because it's a rhetorical question, right? At the end. But if you say, I don't know what, then they haven't understood the joke or are just following the rules of the language, which could indicate that it's an AI. But also it could indicate that you're just a human living in 2023 where you're constantly distracted by stuff. So let's see what they say. I would say both of these did pretty well this time. ChatGPT says, well, I'm not sure if it's a joke or a rhetorical question, but assuming it's a joke, the answer would be, well, you don't get an answer because it's not meant to be answered. It's kind of a verbose answer, but still sort of human. It gets it. Bing did similarly well. It's a clever joke. You get a funny statement that doesn't need an answer. Uh, I'd say a little bit more of a human answer instead of uh, the ChatGPT one, but they both did pretty well on this one, I'd say. Uh, there is a huge range of humans and how humans answer questions like this. Some in a better mood than others. Some might expect a serious question, others might expect a joke question, and humans will vary widely on this one. So I'd say I'd give a one to both of these. But GPT-4 does even better. Do you really expect an answer? Perfect, perfect answer. If I can give it two points here, I would. Next one, what does K-I-S-S -S in quotes mean? Software developers know what that means. ChatGPT says, KISS is an acronym that stands for Keep It Simple Stupid. Yes, the term is often used to encourage people to avoid overcomplicating things. That's right. Bing, come on, Bing. Sorry, I'm not quite sure how to respond to that. What? What do you think, I'm hitting on you? Fun fact, did you know strawberries can be red, yellow, green, or white? What? Objection, Your Honor, relevance. What is going on here? Let's try it again. What does kiss mean? Okay, according to the dictionary, kiss has two meanings. As a noun, it means touch with lips as in kissing. Ugh, sorry, Bing. Fail. All right, I'm giving one to Chad GPT on this one and zero to Bing. They're very different, aren't they? GPT-4, no surprise. Pretty much the same answer, one point. Now this one, when I saw this, it took me a little while to figure this one out. If you're not a native English speaker and you read this, uh, it might take you a couple of tries. The only way you can actually figure this out is if you say it out loud. It says, do you know word timers? So you're asking <laughs> what time it is basically, but you're using completely different words than uh, would mean anything, right? So let's see what they say. Bing says, I'm sorry, I don't understand your message. Could you please rephrase it or check your spelling? <sighs> uh, I don't know. This one is tough for humans unless you're like actually looking at it and you're saying it a couple of times. Not really a dead giveaway that it's not a human. Uh, ChatGPT says, I'm having trouble understanding your message. Same thing. But I will give both of these a zero for this one because eventually humans will get this, whereas I don't think that these models will get that. Well, Alex was wrong and only by a few days. It just goes to show how quickly this technology is evolving. Look what GPT-4 says. It seems like there might be some typos. If you're asking, do you know what the time is? I'm unable to provide real time information. <laughs> It freaking figured it out, but then it outed itself. All right, for figuring this out, I'm gonna give it one point because, wow, just one iteration of the model and it can already parse that weird message. Impressive. All right, next one is, was six afraid of seven because seven, eight, nine, or because seven was a registered six offender? Yeah, I'm not gonna say much about that one, but let's plug this in and see what these guys have to say about it. Okay, Bing comes back right away saying, that's a funny joke. Yeah, I think six was afraid of seven because seven, eight, nine. 
That's the original version of the joke and it makes sense because eight sounds like eight. The other version is a bit dark and offensive. Holy cow, Bing. I should give two points to Bing for this one, but we are only allowed one point. Good job. All right, ChatGPT says, it's a classic joke that relies on a play of words. It's a pun. The addition of seven was a registered six offender is a twist on the classic joke, introducing a different layer, meaning that's not intended in the original joke. What? Come on. Then it goes on and explains what it is. For humans that don't get it, this would be a good explanation, but I think humans would probably mostly get it, especially English speaking humans, humans that live in the United States and have heard this term right here. And we're assuming English speakers here because these things only speak English, I think at the time. I think actually Bing speaks multiple languages at this point. Chat GPT kind of belabored the explanation there. So I'm gonna give it a zero for that one. I don't know, the GPT-4 gave a similar explanation to the previous model. It's a little bit too wordy for me, for my taste. Uh, I'm probably not human enough. So this is gonna stay at zero. God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac because he wanted to test his faith. He wanted to test his faith. Hmm. Who are we talking about when we say he? Now, as a human, you can figure out, but as a machine, it might be difficult to parse that out. Whose son and whose faith are we talking about? Oh, Chad GPT, come on. What are you doing? No, no. According to the Abrahamic religions, blah, 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 God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son. Uh, so the answer to this should really be just one word, right? It should just be Abraham. But it's giving this whole history lesson, excerpts from the Bible, both of these, ChatGPT and Bing. No, no, they might be right. They might have an answer in there somewhere, but that's not what this question is asking. It's asking for one word. So they both get a zero. This is a dead giveaway right here that we're not talking to a human. I'm afraid GPT-4 also kind of fails this one uh, in the same way that the previous model did. Gave a really long history lesson, but not one single answer, zero. Next question, would you rather sacrifice one adult to save two children or two children to save five adults? Oof, this is getting grim. And what are we talking about when we say sacrifice? Are we talking about like uh, in a friendly game of, I don't know, Monopoly or what? Actually, you don't sacrifice a Monopoly. What do you do? Uh, chess, maybe? Okay, we know that's not what we're talking about. Bing says, that's a very difficult and hypothetical question. I don't think there is a definitive answer. In this context, a human might say that they would rather save more lives than fewer your lives. What do you think? It's kind of a human answer. And it also says, what do you think at the end? Which is interesting. It's very conversational like, because this is such a non-definitive answer. It wants to know what you think as well, which is, I don't know, if you're talking to a human and you ask him this, they would probably ask you that. So I'm gonna give Bing a one on this one. Let's see what ChatGPT says. Ooh, as an AI language model, I do not have a personal preferences or values like humans. So we're gonna ignore that part, right? Because we're ignoring whenever it says as an AI language model, because that's a giveaway. In ethical terms, the question is a classic example of a moral dilemma where there are two options and both involve sacrificing human lives. And in such situation, the answer depends on one's personal moral beliefs and ethical frameworks. So ChatGPT actually gives further details on different belief types like utilitarianism. It talks about deontological ethics. I've never seen that word before. I'll admit it. <laughs> but it's it's teaching you stuff, which is kind of cool. I really like that about ChatGPT. It's not just um, an answer. Like Bing is more human-like, I think, overall, because it gives an answer and it tries hard to be human-like, to be uh, an assistant. Whereas ChatGPT not only gives you an answer, it gives you some definitions, it gives you some context, it teaches you things that you might have not known before. I always learn something new when I'm using ChatGPT, which is really cool. However, I gotta give this one to Bing. I, got, I already gave it a one. I'm gonna give a zero to ChatGPT for the Turing test that we're actually trying to do here. GPT-4 had a similar answer, so still doesn't earn any points for this one, but it did uh, actually provide more information. It's a bigger model and it's got utilitarianism, deontological ethics, and virtue ethics now. Three bullet points. More stuff to learn. Cool. You still get a zero for being human. So I do have the results for this. Chad GPT got a four out of 10. Bing got six out of 10. So Bing is a little bit closer, in my view, to being more human-like to passing the Turing test than Chad GPT. Neither one of them got a 10 out of 10, which is passing the Turing test completely. And although GPT-4 did better than the previous version, it's still not human enough. Maybe it's coming in the next version. 
GPT-5? Time will tell. If you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Thank you so much, folks. And thank you to these wonderful folks who are members of the channel, who support the channel. Uh, if you want to also support the channel financially, there is a button down there. You get certain perks, but you don't have to. You can also just subscribe. That's free. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Do you know what the time is?